We are here with hopefully no internet issues for another, I don't know, was it a big week of wrestling? I don't know. It kind of was, right? I mean, for women's title, and I think that's the kind of the big thing I can think of. We had that yeah. the Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa, which was almost a year to the day from the Lights Out match uh, that they had uh, in 2021. Yes, 364 days. Crazy. I also just gr- yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize the 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 symmetry there, or that uh, the St. Patrick's Day slam was going to be in Thunder Rosa's adopted hometown. Um, so that that probably would have uh, swayed my opinion two weeks ago, <laughs> uh, going into Revolution. Um, then again, they're they're not uh, prone to uh, a ton of fifty fifty booking, um, but that's exactly what they just did. So, oh uh, man, well you know, congratulations to the new champ. It's I think it was about time. I I'd, I'd gotten gotten a little grown a little old of um, of Britt Baker's reign. I mean, mainly just because like we've had Jamie Hader, we've had Rebel. We've had so many people just help out Britt Baker. And Britt Baker's a fantastic wrestler, and she doesn't need all that that kind of like WWE shenanigans. And I kind of wish that we would have gotten more of that, um, you know, over her run, or at least the more like the last several months of this run. It just felt like there was just too many kind of like WWE crutch and uh, endings here than, than I would have liked. I don't disagree with that, but uh, I'm inside that. Hopefully we get a, get a good run out of it. Uh, hopefully uh, she's in good health and not, not just taking on this belt because that's part of TK's plan and not, uh, and not suffering like uh, Kenny Omega seems to be suffering quite a lot. And he's been, he's recovering from knee surgery right now. He's got an athletic hernia, hernia that he still has to get taken care of. Uh, I think there may be like one or two other things. So he's, yeah, something about his his hip and his shoulder, yeah. I believe, were were also in need of surgery. So uh, yeah, he's beat up. So it's a really good time for him to 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 hone in and focus on the video game. So hopefully yeah. it uh, it's everything that he's hoping for. Yeah, and he uh, he also announced a, or worked with them and Christopher Daniels to announce a partnership with DDT and some other ancillary Japanese promotions, which they've already been using some of their wrestlers. But I mean DDT is the most wild um i mean gcw wild as far as violence uh ddt is wild in the in the pure insanity of that promotion uh that's where you had the the heavy metal weight uh, open heavyweight metal weight championship where uh we as fans have been the the championship at some point um there's been a a sex doll that's been a champion um pretty sure uh rip razor ramon was also briefly the champion uh by not actually even wrestling. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty wild. It's, it's, it, they've taken the, the WWE hardcore championship to, to an even greater degree than they ever did with the 24 seven, which, you know, they've done some interesting things with 24 seven, but nothing like the, the open heavy metal weight championship. So we'll see, kind of see what that comes to, comes around being but the interesting thing is the rumor Seth with a game was saying that you know a lot of talent have not been approached at all yet for this this game so I'm kind of curious like who's going to get who are going to be some weird omissions for this AEW video game especially with them adding you know new people seemingly every week obviously there's going to be a cutoff point where those some of those people won't be in it I mean, honestly, they they are probably just going to get the first one out with you know eighteen to twenty yeah. people in it. Uh, so your EVPs, Britt Baker, uh, Adam Cole. Um, I mean, the the people that you know you're contractually going to have around when the game comes yeah. out, so that you're you're not putting the fiend in a game um, well beyond his ninety day <laughs> non compete clause. Because uh, I know they're they're super thrilled about uh, 2K basically saying eat shit. We programmed them; they're going in. Yeah, um, it takes a lot of work. So, yeah, um, the, I, I want a good 40 percent of the roster in that game that you get right out of the gate. Uh, they are not there anymore. So, 
Um, I would imagine that it's, you know, it, he's working with the company that, that did the old school games. Those games didn't have large rosters. I mean, yeah. you, uh, they probably had, you know, 30 to 40 tops as opposed to the like 120 wrestlers that you can cram into a WWE game now. And some of them were are um, classics like Aki Man and, and it's people that don't even <laughs> exist, really. Yeah. So I, I honestly, you just, you get, you know, probably your top six women, um, you know, your, your top 14 guys, uh, uh, I'd say probably six of them are tag team specialists. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's not going to be a large roster. I think it's going to be one of those things where, uh, it's, it, unfortunately it'll end up being like a, uh, uh, downloadable content that you have to pay for later. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're really more going to focus on getting the game out and having it be, uh, tolerable, um, considering the, not the most recent, uh, 2k game, which has gotten decent reviews, but the last few, uh, WWE offerings have, um, have bombed horribly. And I just, uh, you know, I, I kind of stayed connected to wrestling by playing some of those earlier 2k games. I played 2k 13 and I think 2k 11, uh, and even 2k 14. I enjoyed playing those games before, I even got back into wrestling in, in 2015. So it's just, it's just like, I want to see these games succeed. Like if uh, I'm probably not going to buy the the latest 2k game, but like when, I mean, when it comes down in price, maybe I, I might, I might do so. Uh, yeah. If you buy the deluxe thing, it's like over a hundred bucks. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's a hundred dollars. If you buy the NW, the NWO edition is 120. Um, realistically, if, if you do, if it's anything like, I guess 2K20 because they didn't do a 21. Um, if it's like that one and you wait six months, the game's like $18 in the shop and you get all of the downloadable crap with it. So it's it, it's not worth buying right out of the gate. So if they're if they're basing 2K's success here on uh, just initial sales, they're, it's it's going to tank and they're going to switch to EA and that game will probably really <laughs> suck because e- EA is not known for upgrading their shit as you move along. It's minor tweaks, and they just hand you the same game for another <laughs> seventy bucks. Uh, man, yeah, I just wanted to—I just wanted a game to be fun to play again, and it'd be yeah, nice. Like, so we're gonna try to figure out, like, maybe on this channel to to play No Mercy remotely, and especially if you want to get on that. Like, hey, you have no interest in actually podcasting, but you want to do a stream with like me and Matt, and maybe a couple other people playing some No Mercy. Let's do it. Let's let's figure it out. So I'm going to try to figure that out. Uh, it'll be over Mac PC. Um, supposedly it's it's doable. So I'm gonna I'm gonna research how to how to make that happen. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, what else What else happened this week? We got. Uh, I mean, I bought double or nothing tickets. I don't know if that was before the last <laughs> last thing. I bought so many wrestling tickets for the month of uh, of May June first as well. Uh, got <laughs> double or nothing combo tickets. I'm going to PCW Ultras uh, Friday the 13th show in May, and uh, and I also am going to the Forum in uh, in LA for for Dynamite. Uh, di- and that that was the most difficult tickets to get was the Forum. Double or nothing tickets, pretty easy. So they're kind of starving for it. At the Forum, I feel like there's a lot of people that are just uh, just over having to go to Vegas for yeah. stuff. Uh, mostly because it, it's a cesspool, and you're going to leave there completely broke. And wrestling tickets are already expensive enough. So I, I do highly recommend Sam's Town. It's off the Strip, and it's kitschy, and it's just just far enough away from the Strip where you just don't get like beaten down by it. Uh, that it seems to do when you're there, even if you're paying for some nice accommodations. The Vegas just wears me down. So. And Sam's Town has both a bowling alley and a movie yeah. theater, so you can keep yourself occupied <laughs> uh, and away from the Avatar slot machine. So, but I, uh, um, Elsa and I are going to go to a Meow Wolf, uh, the the Mega Mart thing, which is uh, looks like a wild, like kind of art installation that I can't can't wait to check that out. So, uh, and it, if you are going to be in the Las Vegas <laughs> area, the Saturday night of Memorial Day weekend, Limp Biscuit is in town playing a show yes so check that <laughs> out fred durst's old man looking ass with his his goatee 
yeah, it's, I, I almost want to go to double or nothing just for the sake of, uh, the, the limp biscuit show, uh, cause they are not coming anywhere near me. <laughs> uh, I can tell you that, but, uh, yeah, on the, the week of wrestling, I don't, I mean, nothing really jumped out. Uh, Brock Lesnar carried a truck door around, which was kind of cool. Um, Charlotte uh, carries I, Ronda Rousey's uh, yeah. feud. Okay, that yeah, we we can we can definitely hit on that because I've been I've been trying my best to figure out why it is that just I, and I thought it was because you know I watched, I think I, I think it was Misha Tate. I watched Misha Tate kick Ronda Rousey's head in in like 15 seconds and thought, well, you can't use the baddest woman on the planet gimmick anymore. And she still tries to do it. Uh, I was trying to figure out why it is that, that she doesn't resonate for me. Like she seems to do with whoever it is that, that she does. Uh, Vince McMahon. she has the, char- <laughs> yeah, she has the charisma of a house plant. Um, she is horrible in promos. Like, I mean, I can get over, you know, subpar pro wrestling. Um, I do it constantly for Shane McMahon, who throws the same T-Rex punches. I can't get over it if you don't at least give me the other half of what a pro wrestler is supposed to be. I need the promo. I need the character. I need the charisma. There's a lot of people it, throughout pro wrestling history that are shitty pro wrestlers. <laughs> but when they had a microphone in their hand... I mean, uh, case in point, the Ultimate Warrior was the world champion for fucking ever and numerous times. It wasn't because he was good in the ring. It was because he looked like a giant slab of beef and he like there were, he built a character that resonated. Ronda Rousey is so bad on the mic, it kills me. <laughs> and Charlotte is having to do so much heavy lifting here and she will never get the credit she deserves for it. Yeah, it, it's it, it's irritating as hell. I do feel like Rhonda had, and I think she was more invested in that Becky Lynch feud. And I don't know, you know, maybe she just doesn't have the fire in in her like for this. And like, not saying that she was amazing that Becky Lynch feud, but like, I think she could at least she at least rose to that occasion. I don't think she's doing that here. Well, I I, I think they've they've done a great job of surrounding her with people to like help kind of mask the issues. You know, you put her in the ring with Kurt Angle across from Hunter and Steph. Like it's, it's going to hide a lot of the shortcomings. Right. Um, Becky Lynch is going to, uh, Becky Lynch made Nia Jax look good. Um, I mean, it's, they, they've done a great job trying to hide it. Um, but this feud has required her to do a lot more promo work um, on her own in the ring by herself and it, it it's it's not there. Um, I mean, if if this is just a paycheck for her, it's definitely coming across that way. So, how about uh, Seth Rollins might finally have a WrestleMania opponent? Uh, they, we've gotten numerous reports that Cody Rhodes has actually signed pen to paper, uh, but we won't actually get a a, a debut until actual WrestleMania. So he's not going to even show up on raw. So Seth's, <laughs> Seth's going to bumble around for another, what, what, two weeks or is it just one week? We got two more weeks of raw. Two yeah. Weeks. We got two more weeks. Two of weeks raw. Yeah. So, so we got that, that's Seth Rollins, uh, like I'm struggling to get on the card, like, like situation, um, which is just kind of a weird, a weird storyline really. Uh, like I got to get on the show because I was on it all the year, all these years. I don't know. It's just it's just a weird thing set up for me. Um, but Cody Rhodes, neck tattoo and all, uh, especially or unless they cover it up with Stardust makeup, uh, that would be amazing. It would be amazing. And I did see Cage Side State Seat saying was like they should use that theme because a it was good and b like it'll troll everybody for like a few moments before uh, before Cody Rhodes actually does come out. So, I don't know. Yeah, I I don't know. I kind of want the 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 full uh, wrestling has more than one royal family entrance. Yeah. Like desperately want it. Um, so here's hoping he owns the rights to that. Um, and I hope it. I hope they go on right after Charlotte and Rousey. Mm. But um, 
I don't know. It's it, you're right. It's it's been bumbling, and it's it's. I mean it. It's interfered a lot with Kevin Owens's ability to like keep pushing this this Stone Cold thing. Um, you know, it's. I get it. He can't just go out there and like make an open challenge because then everybody on the roster looks like they just ignored it yeah. for the sake of of Cody showing up. Um, but realistically, just just keep Seth off TV for a couple of days or just have him do frustrated back, backstage promos about how he's not going to be at WrestleMania. And then he just like a match doesn't even completely end or something. And he, he does his full entrance and gets a microphone. He's like, I'm not leaving until I get an opponent kind of thing. Yeah. Like do one of those. Don't, don't keep wasting TV time. I know you got a ton to fill because raw is, already two hours too long but it <laughs> let's just repeat uh wrestlemania 34 let's have seth rollins like eating popcorn in the front row like for like half of mania <laughs> and then cody rhodes shows up to challenge him or i mean really at this point just since you're gonna unify belts anyway just start letting belts float back and forth do a uh, intercontinental ladder match that Rollins can be part of with Ricochet and, you know, pick a couple of high flyers, maybe a big dude or two, and then leave the mystery spot open. It's never a mystery when they do these. Yeah. So just just do one of those and then have Cody be the, the surprise entrant. Um, it I, there's, there's a thousand ways to do it that don't just get to the point where you really don't give a shit anymore. And they have, they've crossed that line two weeks ago. So speaking of surprises, I was thinking about it because of WrestleMania, the 33, when the Hardy boys show up, how, how you lost your shit. And I popped. Hard. Yeah. And now we got, we got Jeff and Matt in, in AEW working together, <laughs> Matt forcing himself to fit into that sausage, like, <laughs> Uh, fishnet outfit. That's that's, that sausage casing <laughs> shirt that he was in on rant or dynamite the other night. Like I, I know he's getting older, but like just just walk across the ring and ask Jericho what he did because clearly it's working. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's whole thirty, if he just quit drinking. I don't know what it is. But Jericho looks great. Uh, maybe it's just that it got in his head that he looked like a human potato in the video game <laughs> trailer. I I don't know, but Jericho looks fantastic, and um, either either Matt Hardy should should I mean don't want to body shame him or anything, but the shirt just it, it it's too tight. I know you went into the closet and found the Hardy Boys gear, but it's okay to say the shirt's too tight. I'll wear something else tonight. Uh, I'm sure you've got merch already. Just. Just throw yeah. it on, yeah. I, so, or pull an edge and just find a damn metal band T-shirt in your closet and wear that to the ring rather than try to sell your merch. I guess, uh, I guess the hot topic in San Antonio area had had closed down and didn't survive COVID, so he wasn't able to buy a new shirt. Well. Oh, I'm sure he could have he could have borrowed something from the box that <laughs> would have worked. Oh man. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm at least I'm glad that this whole kind of Hardy family office thing's over. Uh, I know it's Andrade office, whatever. I don't know what is what they call it now, but, uh, you know, at least that was a great match with private party. They're going to sell the hell out of that match for, uh, for Mark Quinn. And I forget the other one. Um, Isaiah, oh, yeah, Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn, man, they're they're really good at selling. They're really good at putting these guys over. So I am kind of, uh, yeah, I think that's a good natural progression there. It, it'll be interesting to see this tornado tag match with Sting and Darby and the Hardy Boys versus the Butcher Blade and uh, Private Party, I guess. Or is is Andrade sl sliding in there for one of those spots? It seems like he has to. I I don't know. I think it's uh, it'll probably just be uh, Butcher and Blade and Private Party. Yeah. Um, but it, for some reason, it just dawned on me that these are going to be your blood and guts teams, which means Sting is getting in the double cage. 
Uh, <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> although, I mean, that's scary. You know, you know, although they've been in it already a whole bunch, uh, you know, I kind of also would see, I think there's a lot of options for this blood and guts cage. Cause I think I was, I'd also like, um, uh, damn, I just, I just, just lost it. Um, Oh, what it would, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of options there. You have, you have those two teams, you have the House of Black that could be interesting. You have the whole Elite Saga that could be cool. Um, I think there's a lot of different combinations you could do. But, oh, oh yeah, yeah, the Jericho Appreciation Society. That's what I was going for. Like, seeing, like, Garcia in that cage and some of those other guys, uh, I think that could be pretty good. But... Let- let, I'm glad you you brought them up. Let's let's talk about the Jericho Appreciation Society <laughs> uh, because as a faction name, it's terrible. But the fact that Jericho has created an entire faction to troll WWE by acting like WWE, <laughs> like that is, that is other level, like breaking the fourth wall, just super meta ass trolling, and I. I I, I I rewatched that promo. I, I was in awe of of <laughs> that level of like troll supremacy coming out of Chris Jericho. It was amazing. Um, I mean, the only thing crazier is if like if he goes and just pulls a Cody, and then all of a sudden he's back at WMP like two months from now. Um, but I loved it when Daniel Garcia grabbed that mic from from Jericho after he declared himself a, a sports entertainer. And then that like smile that he's like, and I'm a sports entertainer too. <laughs> like, it's it was it was pretty good, and I, it was the, kind of the first moment that I feel like Daniel Garcia really stepped up, like uh, on the mic as well, because he's he is surrounded yeah. by those uh, those two um, goons um, of 2.0. I'm 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 curious to know how many rejected tryouts Garcia had. Um, because if you look at the other four guys in the ring, 2.0 just released. Mm. Hager got got the pink slip. Jericho left of his own accord, but you know I don't think they're going to invite him back as he's he's grown more and more comfortable talking shit about him yeah. as time has gone on. Um, I think he was very careful early, just in case AEW didn't work. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Now that he sees that it's a viable thing, I, you know, it's. I, I would be curious to know because it, it it would help the narrative um, for me just on the back end to know if Garcia had. I mean, it, even if it was just like one tryout where he was he was told, you know, not you're you're not for us kind of yeah. thing, um, and it may have been, you know, he tried out at the same time as Braun Breaker, <laughs> and uh, right as two point was kicking off. Um, but it, I would, I would be very curious to know if that was a thing. Um, so I'll probably have to find a, uh, a podcast with Renee, or uh, I think, I think he's got one with Jericho already. Well, so. and then I think as you mentioned too, uh, when you watched that promo, they were like, we, we go by real names here, and then they proceeded to mention 2.0's names, and it's like, <laughs> I can't remember their names, but there's like, and Chris Jericho. It's like, dude, your name's Chris Irvine. That's- <laughs> we we know that's not <laughs> your name, buddy. Like, come on now. You're the you're the one guy in that ring that we know has a stage name. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I thought that was a nice touch. Because, like, honestly, I didn't know the 2.0's names well enough. Besides Daniel Garcia, the uh, who's you know their son or whatever. Like, uh, I didn't know their names anyway, so like it didn't matter. So. I mean, the, the only guy in there that I think actually uses a real name even now is Hager. <laughs> <laughs> and that may not even be his real name. Uh, um, Let's find out. Jake Hager. Yeah, it's not as cool of a name as Kevin Nash or Scott Hall, RIP, again. Okay. But uh, Jake Hager is his real name. He goes by his middle name because... I guess I guess Donald Hager <laughs> isn't an, an MMA fighter, uh, but yeah, he he's the one guy that was in that ring the other night that I thought, yeah, that's the only guy <laughs> that uses his real name. So, well, yeah, I'm excited about this. I think there's a lot of blood and guts possibilities. Um, so, yeah, I think I do. the The one thing I worry about with the Hardys at this point is that this this feud with the Andrade office 
is going to linger on like Pinnacle and uh, Inner Circle did. Yeah. Um, to the point where it, 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 I mean, it's it's a huge thing that the the Hardys are back together and they're here where FTR is and the Bucks are and I mean. AEW is where the greatest tag teams in the world are, save for, I, I'm going to say the Usos, because they're fucking incredible. Um, but if, if they get stuck in that same perpetual loop, because there's there's nothing else to do with them just yet, I I, I worry about that. Um, because, it, I mean, it's it's not something we haven't seen numerous times already. Yeah. Some other cool, cool things. I, I, I thought the, uh, I know you weren't able to watch it uh, because of the, the, the um the scheduling issue you know your deviator dvr didn't catch all of it but the the um keith lee versus dante martin was pretty great i love that they they told him to go back to the renaissance fair uh caster oh, max caster yeah um yeah oops missing up my my ta- <laughs> my tag teams um i love that they told max caster told uh told him to go but keith lee to go back to the renaissance fair because of like making fun of how he talks uh called him like henry the eighth which maybe you should go after a nobility that didn't like i don't know yeah chop off his head his wife's heads um but yeah now we got a kind of like an alliance of swerve and and keith lee which could be could be pretty great um against yeah. some kind of version of Hobbs and starks and uh and the acclaimed itself so uh, I'm excited to see that. But um, what else? Anything else interesting for you this week? Uh, we got a uh, – ah, it was just kind of a placeholder match because uh, we, we know what we're getting at Stand and Deliver is uh, Braun Breaker and Dolph Ziggler. Um, but LA Knight did get an NXT title shot on NXT this week. Um so whether he goes to Raw or stays behind, at least somebody's pushing him. Um, so I, that that gave me hope. Uh, Braun Breaker is is I I don't even I'm surprised he's even on the stand and deliver card, um, and they haven't just put him in the ring with Seth yeah. Rollins for WrestleMania <laughs> already. Uh, so I I do I have hopes that you know regardless of of where he ends up, LA Knight is is going to get the next the next push. Um, as he should, the the man is money. Um, the fact it's taken them so this long to see it is astounding. Um, uh, what else did we get? NXT Stand and Deliver will also feature Ciampa and Tony D'Angelo. Uh, Ciampa basically said his goodbyes to NXT um, on Tuesday. Um, so he's he's getting the one send off match with D'Angelo. Um, which just felt like it came out of nowhere. Um, well, hopefully it doesn't did, end up with I, a name like Butch uh, on the main roster. Sp- speaking of Butch, I do think it's funny that Butch showed up like two weeks later on Raw after Tony D'Angelo held an in-ring funeral for Pete Dunne. <laughs> um, so if that was some sort of uh, some sort of catchy thing that they did there, bravo. I don't think it was because they would have undoubtedly said it. Um, and then Seamus wouldn't have said people probably know him by a different name when he introduced him on uh, on Raw or SmackDown, whichever one they're on. I can't keep up with it. Just merge the damn brands again. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but Butch, that's that's just dumb. I, <laughs> I, do, I don't get it. Um, just if you if you don't own the rights to, to his name, that's fine. But you have the rights to bruiser weight. Yeah. Just, just call him that until you come up with something better than Butch. He's not a, he's not a character from Snatch. Yeah. Like, let's just, just give him the nickname for a little while, or don't have him, don't call him by a name. Like, I'm good with that too. He's just the enforcer that walks around with two guys that do not look like they need an <laughs> enforcer. Uh, since Ridge, Ridge Holland is a brick wall. Um, Speaking of Ridge Holland, Big E does seem to be okay. He went on a walk in his neighborhood and live streamed it. Mm. Um, he is in a neck brace, but uh, he seems to be in good spirits, which he doesn't seem to ever leave. So yeah, I mean, the good good news is, like he said in his tweet, is like if you're gonna get if you're gonna break your neck, do it in Birmingham because that's like where they get sent anyway. 
Uh, so, <laughs> so like he didn't have to go very far to get checked out. Um, yeah, yeah, he didn't. He didn't have to get on a on a plane with a broken yeah. neck. So I guess that helps. Yeah. Um, and then he could probably just, I don't know, take a comfortable rental car to uh, back to Tampa. I think he lives in Tampa. Yeah. So they all live in Tampa. I don't know why I said I think. <laughs> Uh, they live in Tampa because they, they rent houses from John Cena, who I'm pretty sure just owns Tampa <laughs> at this point. Uh, well, I think that's kind of it for this week then. Then we're going to kind of – we'll catch you up as, as things progress. We're getting really close to Mania, and it seems like people are actually – like Cody signing the bottom line. Stone Cold has finally, like, agreed to what he is and what he's not going to do. So, like, I think WWE is kind of less in a holding pattern because they're really just – just like Seth was really just a the the WWE at large, they were like, oh, we don't know what we're doing for Mania right now. <laughs> like so that that was that storyline was playing out of of the booking of the whole show. So, but now it seems like they actually are things are kind of coming together, and we'll have some more of that to talk about in the next uh, week or so. Um, uh, is it going to be a good Mania? Who knows? But I guess I'll watch it. I get Peacock for free, so okay, sure. Johnny Knoxville and Sami Zayn are doing an Anything Goes match. So we should get some <laughs> really ridiculous bumps in that one. Um, I'm honestly terrified to see what they come up with. Because uh, Sami has never shied away from doing just absolutely stupid stuff. And Johnny Knoxville's made a career out of absolutely stupid Johnny stuff. Johnny Knoxville so, puts that little con- that contraption on uh, Sammy's head with the like ice scorpions, or whatever, coming through the through the little tube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- this could be th- that that could be the the highlight of WrestleMania. I'm just I'm putting it, it out there right now. It could now. be the bad bunny. It sounds ri- yeah. yeah. It sounds ridiculous on paper, but. As much work as the two of them have put into hyping this thing, like Johnny Knoxville renting the the message plane and like flying it around LA with Sami Zayn's phone <laughs> number on it, <laughs> like they're they're really putting in some legwork to to get people interested in this thing, um, and it, it it really does. It reminds me of the Bad Bunny thing. Um, so I, I have I, I got a sneaking suspicion that 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 match could steal. With I think it's on Sunday. Yeah. So short of Lesnar and Reigns doing something that we haven't seen 82 times already, um, I, I think that that match could steal Sunday. Oh, and then just one quick non-WWE thing. Ring of Honor has booked the Briscoes versus FTR uh, for Supercard of Honor, which you know people have been asking for. And we thought maybe we wouldn't get it all because uh, there's somebody at, at, at HBO, at Warner, that uh, very much does not want the Briscoes, um, you know, in AEW TV at any point. So th- this might be the only time, and maybe depending on how they handle Ring of Honor, that like whether you know maybe a separate TV deal, maybe we do get them more often. But uh, Briscoes versus FTR would pretty, be pretty good. Um, th- also, I, I don't think it's a coincidence they kind of went on record again saying kind of being apologetic about their past comments, uh, homophobic comments. So, you know, maybe this is also an effort for them to kind of make good. So they could actually get on, on television or a future HBO meet uh, max kind of streaming deal. Who knows? So I'm excited for it. Well, Matt, what can they do? What can people do to support this show? Like subscribe, ring the bell, share, um, I'm sure we've got an email address. If you want to see us do something different, let me know. I probably won't change anything, but it's <laughs> worth trying. Um, if you would like to be a guest host, shoot us an email or a text message. I'm pretty sure everybody that listens has our phone numbers. Uh, let us know. Uh, if we do get the, the 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 gaming option up and can live stream, uh, we'd love to have you do that. If you want to play NWO, WCW NWO World Tour, I will whoop that ass with Disco Inferno. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let you know now. Um, so yeah, if you want to be a part of the show, we'd love to have you. Just let us know. All right, see you next week. <laughs>